What is up everybody? I've been having a lot of questions asked in the comments about how to do a realistic tattoo. So I thought about this for a while and how to appropriately set up different steps on how to get to that point of doing more realistic things. So in this video today, I'm going to be explaining exactly how I find references and pictures online and how to create them into a great realism black and gray tattoo design from that. I'm also going to be making a video of how I make my stencils for more realistic things. So that way, when we get on to actually tattooing realism, you're going to know every step going up to that point that I do with every single tattoo. And as always, if you're new to this channel, I'm Brandon from Tattooing 101. And make sure you're liking and subscribing down below so you can keep up to date on all of the new content we make each week. All right, so now let's get into how I find my realistic references for tattooing. Okay, so now we're gonna start by how I look up references for actual realism or more realistic tattoos when I'm doing them. So the best tool I like to use is either Google or Pinterest. They both have really nice designs on there. Pinterest is honestly a little bit better when it comes to like quality and things like that. But for this video, I'm going to use Google. Just know that you could find plenty of awesome pictures on Pinterest as well. Let's go close up eye. So. What we're going to be looking for when it comes to this is a really nice high quality picture. You know, depending on what style you're doing, let's say, even if you're looking up something for more neo-traditional, something like that, you know, uh, stylized, I like that would work really great. Um, for realism, you want something really, really clean. You know, you want it to be the best quality physically possible and, you know, just have it look really nice so you can incorporate other things with it to have it flow with the body and it look right for either the sleeve or wherever they're getting it at on the body as well. So let's just pick a nice high quality design. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, as you can see, when you blow this up, you know, it has loaded completely. You could see that it is, you know, still dull. So we're going to go um, look through a couple of more and find one that's actually really, really nice quality. Yeah, that one actually looks pretty good. Awesome. So I'm going to screenshot this. You could screenshot it, you know, save it. I like screenshotting. It's just quicker for me. So do it that way. Then we're going to go to a blank sheet on Procreate and go here to insert a photo, put that on there. And that's going to be our design. Now from here, one thing that's going to help you out a ton when it comes to doing realism is gonna be changing your levels. So what I mean by that is the different types of grays in the actual design. Um, with this design, I'm just going to do the eye. There's not gonna be any eyebrow or anything. So we're focusing more on right here for the actual tattoo. So we're gonna go here go to hue, saturation, and brightness. So this is gonna be a black and gray design. So you wanna make sure you change that there and you can change your brightness. Um, usually what I do is I'll print out a couple different ones. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. So I'm going to change it to black and gray like this. Have one right here. Perfect, then I'm gonna go here, cut, paste, or you could copy and paste. And then I'm gonna paste another one right below it right like that and so this one i'm going to have lighter i'm going to show all my light tones everything to know exactly where all these lightest tones are but i also want to know where my heavy black areas are you know you in this design there's not much black even with like the eyelashes things like that that need to be powerful um you can't really tell the depth in that so what i'm going to go in here back to hue saturation and brightness and then just change the brightness slightly so you could see those really dark areas on um, the outside of the eye is dark um, you know the eyelashes things like that but you could still see on the light one you know where everything needs to be so for the stencil I'm obviously going to use the light one so I can go through mark all the shading and where everything needs to be but I'm going to print these both off when I do the actual tattoo that way I know where all my dark areas need to be in order for it to hold up through time and make for a great tattoo so awesome this would be the eye now if we're working on actual faces We'll go back to Google. So whenever I type something in to find a good face as a reference, what I'm going to be typing in is like girl face model um, or girl model or arm hand model, you know, something that I know is going to pull up different pictures. So with these, just like the eye, we want a really nice high quality picture. Um, you know, I kind of want it to the side. I don't want it straight on for, you know, what I have in my mind. You kind of have to have, you know, an idea so you could find a picture perfect for what you're looking for. So. Let's go through here and let's say this one's perfect. So it's not a straight on, you know, it's kind of edgy. It'll work great with like a headdress or something like that if you're doing more of a Native American tattoo. Um, so we'll go through here, screenshot that. Insert a photo. 
cool. And you can see that the quality is actually pretty nice. We'll get rid of the background. Okay, so from here, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're gonna go through, change the saturation, bring that down, and you do the same thing with the darkness. You know, this will be super dark. Um, you want it kind of about right here, so you can see the cheekbones, things like that. But for the stencil and the other part of the tattoo, you want it bright enough that you can see the different hair strands and things like that. Another thing I like to do if, you know, they're trying to piece different things together. Um, so this is what I do. Say they wanted it um, like this, but they wanted like a tiger head on top of them, like wearing a headdress, something like that. So we're going to go here. Type in tiger head. Let's see if it has any really high quality design. So... She's kind of turned a little bit, so we don't want it straight on. Um, honestly, I find it a lot easier to find animal heads on actual Pinterest. Um, you know, I like Pinterest a lot when it comes to finding designs like this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add an actual tiger head to this. So I found the design that I was wanting to work with right here. It has kind of the same, you know, angle with it. So I'm just going to take out all of these parts because we're just going to be using the head. Bring the opacity down, the saturation down and bring the brightness up a little bit. So now we're just going to kind of focus on having it set up correctly. So having it like a headdress, something like that. Her hair comes up a little bit, so we're going to bring her down. And then we can just piece these together how we want. So this is how I do most of my more realistic designs. Obviously, I'll go in here and cut out all this stuff really nicely. Um, going up to everything so there's no backgrounds. Um, but for the sake of the video, you know, that takes me quite a while. Though we'd be sitting here for, you know, an hour or two just working on just this stuff. So turn it a little bit and have it come down right like that. And then you can go in, add the teeth coming down if you wanted to do that, um, or change it really however you want. You could add endless amounts of things, you know, if you wanted to go that you had some room on the side for a rose, or they wanted a rose, so we'll just do rose on google and pull up you know anyone will work you just want to make sure that anything you're pulling as a reference needs to be really nice quality um, and more of a close-up picture is going to help you out a ton so let's go with this go here and we're going to add some roses to the side of this i'm going to go through here quickly and take the background out Now bring down the saturation and brightness. We're going to move this around until we get, you know, a really nice idea of the brightness and where everything needs to go, and also the dark areas as well. So this is why I always print off two different ones, you know, so I could have like the dark areas you can see in here. It needs to be really dark right here, um, you know, all those areas. But you could also see the brightness of it, you know, what really needs to stand out. Because um, you want something with a lot of different tones in it so you'd be able to clearly see where everything needs to go so yeah you could add some roses right here if it's like on a headdress and you want some flowers kind of going on one area right like this and you know you could add some other stuff to it put some stuff on the background the possibilities are endless but you need to know how to kind of set these things up and what to look for if you're doing more realistic stuff because it could be really hard trying to pick and tattoo things if they're just not really nice quality um, just because you're not going to be able to tell where everything needs to go. Um, all of the tones are going to be off because everything's going to be pixelated, things like that. So obviously with this flower, I could zoom way in and just clearly be able to tell all of the tones, um, which is going to help out a lot. Even though I do have an iPad and I do wrap it up and have it at my station to look at, obviously I don't touch it during the tattoo process, um, I still do print off the actual designs as well so I can see it right beside. Um, another thing when it comes to realism, sometimes I like to sit back and look at the piece as a whole. If you're like tattooing up close for long periods of time, you kind of get lost in everything. So standing back and looking at everything, looking at your picture and seeing it as a whole will help out a ton. So 
Obviously, this is how I set up for more realistic designs, how I piece things together on Procreate um, in order to create new designs. Obviously, this process takes way longer when I'm actually doing it for a tattoo. So just practice with these steps, um, doing things like this, and make sure you're doing it on different layers as well. So, you know, if you wanted to change something up, say the tiger idea was, you know, just not what you wanted for the piece, you know, you could change it up if you're wanting to do this, but add some flowers to it, right, like that, like they're in her hair. You know, you could do that very easily and you don't have to redo the whole thing because everything's on different layers. Awesome, so that is how I set up for drawing for more realistic stuff. Not necessarily drawing, but piecing things together. I hope that this was able to help you guys out and point you in the right direction for designing actual more realistic stuff. My best advice to you would be for this week is make sure you're drawing some of these piecing some of these together because next week i'm going to be doing a video on actual realism so you could learn with me showing you exactly how i do an actual realism tattoo so having these things ready is really going to help you out and what you could do down below is just comment what you are wanting to do realistic it's going to be a tiger a bear um, you know even maybe a human face comment down below so i could see what you're getting ready for when it comes to the actual realism tattoo and also be sure to stay tuned because I'm going to be doing a video on how to stencil this design right here. So I'm going to show you in depth on how I stencil for realism and things like that to get ready for that realistic tattoo. As always, I hope this was able to help you out and you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.